After COVID, vaccines are invented and medicines are readily accessible. Have you ever wondered if you are completely safe and will be immune to all diseases in the near future? The Spanish flu in 1918 proves that cure is not always the most important, but prevention. Let me introduce you to it in detail. Despite scientists' best efforts to unravel the cure, experiments often ended in failure. For example, they tried to find out why some healthy people were immune to the flu. They were put to a risk by letting those who caught the flu cough on them. And yet, the result shocked the whole industry. All 62 of them were uninfected. They had more to investigate. Was the flu even a respiratory disease? How exactly did people get the flu? To answer these questions, the professionals had to get hold of the actual virus itself, dead bodies. Some braver ones went digging for tissues from lumps, but the results left them more mysteries. At the end, no one proved the existence of the flu, not to say its remedy. Undoubtedly, the scientific matter is very important, but at the same time, there are other points worth pondering on. This brutal killer arrived swiftly during World War I and departed as quickly as it came. Yet, the harm it did was much worse than COVID, AIDS, the Black Death, or even World War I itself. It caused tons of deaths, killing 14 million people overnight. Graves overloaded, doctors themselves fell ill, soldiers struggled between life and death, and the war still proceeded. But the flu is long forgotten by people. Why? Maybe because the epidemic was simply so dreadful that people dismissed it as part of the horrors of the wars, blended it into the wartime nightmare, the trench warfare, the submarines, the bloody battles. But it should serve as a wake-up call for us to remind us once again how devastating a pandemic can be and to get our pandemic planning efforts organized. But at the end, the scientists didn't even get hold of the cure. Companies worked around the clock trying to come up with a vaccine, but they were too late. The flu disappeared before anyone could find a cure. It took two weeks, it took two years to vanish, not even completely. It took two years to vanish, but the scientists didn't even find a cure in time to save millions and millions of lives. But hey, this time the cure doesn't matter because we are prepared now and no longer will hordes of young people die of an influenza. Perhaps, as you go smug about the short lasting victory last time, a new plague is now gathering a stronger force. Except this time, we stand armed with better understanding of the past and better prevention strategies to prevent the next pandemic. Thank you. Oscar Wilde once said, to live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people just exist. It means to live in the present and enjoy each moment. After all, we only live once. So why not live it to its very extent? My history teacher at school is really inspirational. When a class is busy jotting down notes, she would teach us life lessons. One of them is so memorable that I remember it till now. She told us, you only live once. Don't be too disappointed by one unlucky thing that happened to you because you miss out. You miss out once, twice, three times, and so on. When your friends invite you for lunch or to play football, you won't go because you're too disturbed by the mishaps that occurred. At this point, she smiled and continued. Putting down and forgetting is one of the most difficult things to accomplish. And yet, it's the only way to live a happy life. The word she said struck me hard and left me thinking, is it really better not to look back into the mistakes we've made? Indeed. Seeking pleasure in the moment makes us happier. But we don't live just for a happy life. We live for a fulfilling one. We live to strive for the better and to achieve the impossible. And to make the impossible possible, we have to become a better person. The way to do so is not to enjoy life, but rather to look deep into the miscalculations we've made before and to learn from them. Mistakes are often seen as failures and should be avoided at all costs. Some may think that we shouldn't look back at them, but in fact, they're valuable learning opportunities. Through errors, we gain wisdom and through failures, we grow. When we make mistakes, it's an opportunity for us to reflect on what went wrong and why. This can help us identify areas for improvement. Then we'll make changes accordingly to prevent the same mistake from happening again. 
let's say you've made a lot of careless mistakes in a math exam and you only realize it when you get the paper back. Take some time to reflect on what you could have done differently to prevent the mistakes from happening. Yes, we have to live, but to live the life we want, we have to look back, even if it hurts. Because only if we reflect on our faults can we have a chance to hope for a better tomorrow. We only live once, and the clock is ticking right now. So would you rather live the happy life you're living or to start living the life you want? Thank you.